Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Robert Lustig and his recent lecture about how healthcare cannot be fixed until health is fixed. Now, Dr. Robert Lustig is probably one of the coolest physicians like in the world, in my opinion. Okay, he is a pediatric neuroendocrinologist from the University of California at San Francisco, which, by the way, is like one of the top academic medical centers in America. Now, pediatric, obviously, he deals with kids. A neuroendocrinologist has to do with the way that hormones impact the brain. He started out his career doing research at the St. Jude Children's Hospital in Memphis, which is like one of the, the most famous children's hospitals, again, in the world. And he has a number of excellent YouTube videos, and he just came out with a new one from a public health convention in Great Britain from just a month ago. So this information is like brand spanking new, and this presentation is fantastic. I will leave a link to it in the show notes. If you have a, it's like almost an hour, so if you have a spare 50 minutes, like, listen to it in the car. I highly encourage you to watch this thing. It is amazing. I will give you a brief summary of just part of it. Now, it was published in October 16th, 2019. Like I said, it's barely a month old. And it deals with what is referred to as metabolic syndrome or metabolic dysfunction, which specifically as it relates to healthcare and healthcare costs, 75% of healthcare costs are spent on diseases and conditions and treatments and diagnosis related to metabolic syndrome and metabolic dysfunction, right? This is where the money is. And so instead of talking about this in sort of amorphous general public health terms, think of it in terms of like your employee health plan and the amount of money that you're spending on your employee health plan and the health of your employees and their family members on that health plan. So just know that like 75% of the problem and 75% of the money is being spent on this metabolic dysfunction. So we have to understand it. Now, many of you are familiar with metabolic syndrome and metabolic dysfunction. We will not go into it in detail today, but it is essentially at the cellular level, the dysfunction that is highly correlated with insulin resistance that then leads to things like diabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol and heart attack and stroke and increased risk of cancer and even things like dementia. Okay, so we're talking about the individual cellular biochemical process that is broken, okay? Now, he has this fantastic chart where he breaks down in America that we have 240 million adults, and he breaks them down into a Venn diagram of essentially two groups, the obese and the normal weight, obese being a BMI of greater than 30, many of you are familiar with that. Okay, so if you do the math on that, 30% of US adults are obese, that, and that 30% is 72 million people. Now, 70% of Americans are of normal weight of BMI less than 30, so that is 168 million people. So fine, so his point then is that if you then look at the metabolic dysfunction of those obese people, not everybody who is obese has metabolic dysfunction. In fact, 80% of people that are obese have metabolic dysfunction. Okay, so four out of five. So if you do the math on that, 80% of the 72 million is 57 million. But that means that actually 20% of the 72 million are MHO. And what is MHO? It is metabolically healthy obese. So in other words, yes, they are obese, but from a metabolic standpoint, they're completely healthy. They will never develop diabetes. They will not develop hypertension. They will probably not have a heart attack or a stroke. Okay, so that's interesting. Now, he looks at the normal weight population, which is the majority, right? 70%, 168 million people. And 40% of those people are also, also have metabolic dysfunction. So if you do the math, 40% of 168 million is 67 million. Aha, isn't that interesting? There are more people that are, have metabolic dysfunction that are of normal weight than are obese. And so his point is, is that so many programs, whether it be in wellness or for population health or public health, say, okay, well, we need to treat the obesity epidemic. Okay, let's start. Let's say you just snapped your finger and you dramatically reduced or solved the obesity problem. You would have only fixed metabolic dysfunction for less than half of the people with metabolic dysfunction. You would have fixed it for 57 million, but you'd have a spare 67 million left over who are still metabolically sick. Okay, so what is his point around that? His point is, is that obesity is the result of metabolic dysfunction. 
It is not the cause of metabolic dysfunction. Let me say that again. Obesity is the result of metabolic dysfunction. And so the real enemy, if you will, is metabolic dysfunction. And one of the ways that it manifests itself early on that is testable and treatable and diagnosable is what is referred to as NAFLD, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So people that have, which, oh, by the way, 40% of Americans have NAFLD, 40%, okay? And if you have NAFLD, if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, you are much more likely to be insulin resistant and you are 3.5 times more likely to then develop diabetes. So really where people get sick, where they become metabolically dysfunctional first, is in their liver. And he goes on in this lecture to talk about the ills of sugar and all the other things that we can do to fix this problem. But he comes up with another incredibly interesting statistic, which is that the number needed to treat of these folks with, uh, with obesity in order to improve their metabolic dysfunction is 25. And oh, by the way, that success rate of 1 out of 25 people will actually get better. That is the same for diet and exercise, and it is the same for pills. So in other words, people say, okay, well, if you take, you know, diet pills or, you know, there's various other medications you can take, or if you do diet and exercise, okay, the point is, is that people say, okay, yeah, for some people it works. Yes, for 1 out of 25 people it works, but for the other 24 people, it does not work, okay? So, we, as uh, people that are involved in employer-sponsored health plans, we need to understand that the way that we have been going about addressing this problem and addressing our healthcare costs, like he says, healthcare costs, healthcare is fixed when health is fixed. So we need to change the way that we think about health in terms of metabolic dysfunction, in terms of it not being just obese people, the majority of them are actually of normal weight, and it relies in our diet and our liver. So really, as employers, what can we do to address diet? I'll talk about that in another video, but I'll end it there for today, and thank you for watching A Health Care Seat.